We knew her as the voice of Lagos. But Tosin was also one of Nigeria's most consistent, most reliable, and yes, most inspiring voices on radio and television. She was a presenter, an actor, a poet, and a writer. Tosin was also my friend. Like, hello, I don't think God makes a mistake. So if he lets me sing when I feel like, then you know, like, so what, what is wrong with that? For as long as I knew her, Tosin lived life her own way. Right from the moment when I first saw her on stage at the Faculty of Law in the University of Lagos, and thought to myself, what spirit, what power. She looked like she had completely figured life out and then conquered the world. It's, it, sometimes I ask myself if my life would be easier if I was like everybody else. And I, I don't know, I don't know that I would ever know. Admitting and leading into her privilege Tosin often said that she had always taken seriously the idea that she must define and design her own life around the things she considered sacred, the people she loved, and the person that she truly was, especially when the curtains are drawn. Oh, it's yourself. You have to sort of be yourself. And when I say be yourself, I'm not saying everybody should be quirky, you know, but like whatever it is that you are, what makes you happy? Yeah. You know, to, as, as much as it's, you're not breaking laws of the land, laws of God, you know, th things like that. Like Today, on the first anniversary of her death, we are releasing this conversation the very last interview she granted before she died. Our conversation took a look at how a person who refuses to be less than herself, who indeed didn't understand that concept, confronted the highs and lows that life brings us. Building a career, handling heartbreak, surviving depression, moving on to marriage, and navigating a bundle of talent. More poignantly, she spoke about death. The death of her father two years before and what her own death would look like. What's the greatest lesson life has taught you? Whatever it is people think you should be or shouldn't be, they're not gonna be there. They're not living this life with you. If you think like, because your world has ended in your, in your mind, you think everybody else is going to stop, you know? People are going to, like, life will continue to move. Life goes on. Whatever it is you're dealing with, whatever it is you're feeling, life will continue to go on. Above all else, today, we remember to see because she taught us how to do life by living life on her very own terms. You've never dealt with loneliness. Never dealt with loneliness. I, you know, like, I love if weird as it is, like some of my happiest moments are when I'm home by myself. Yes. And I've always been like that, like growing up, everything. I think it's because um, I, I like to think I'm an extroverted introvert. So like after, I just like that alone time. It's, it's just so beautiful. I don't like, nah, I haven't dealt with loneliness. No. There's that Catherine Hepburn quote, I think. She's like, I don't want to be alone. I just want to be left alone. Yeah. Does that come close? I mean, I don't, I don't know about left alone because the truth is, it's. I mean, I, I do like company, but what I'm saying is when I'm by myself, I'm fine as well. I'm not, you know, I'm not the kind of person who 
is always trying to be around people or always I, I think it and I think it's actually it actually helps me a lot well sometimes a bit too much because then you I can see you know some there are times when I can be by myself for like weekends like a whole week and stuff like that and not see even daylight <laughs> so when you when you um, when you say you're an extroverted introvert yes the introvert yes. is the natural state I think is the extroversion your concession to the world I'm not too sure which one is you know, let me tell you something I love all these personality tests all these things I've taken it all you know I, I think I'm choleric I'm melancholic I think I'm this I'm think I think I'm that but I found like that middle point is when there are people around I will adapt and I will be like a social butterfly it doesn't stretch you out no but after that then I, I want to just be by myself for a bit you know so I I don't think either one is something I put on I think I actually can handle both states right but I enjoy both equally so I don't know how to explain like when I'm with people and you know I'm like life of the party hey. so it's just, it's what it is. yes it's I mean I don't think either one is something I'm using to help the other you know I that's just how I am. But do you think it comes from having a, a, a it's kind of like the traditional family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mother, father, brothers. Yeah. Like you, you know, everything is it's great. There's no there's no single parent at any time. Yeah. No, I, I don't talk to my sister. <laughs> no, nothing. This unit has been, as far as we can tell, from yeah. Far, because your family has been in the public eye since I think the public eye was invented. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bobby, to see Bobby's family. So the Bobby family has been in Nigeria's consciousness for a long time. Yeah. So you think that it's because your family has been stable that that helps. So you don't have any hang ups, you're not having to deal with or cope or anything. You just be. Be. I I, th I think that I have like a blend of my parents. It's 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 very interesting because even Funke's kids, you know, Funke's my sister. yeah, my sister, she has a. Um, two daughters and we always joke about how her older daughter is exactly like her and her younger daughter is exactly like me she actually calls her younger daughter she's like Tusi like how did I give birth to you you know so I think what it is is I have like a, an interesting blend of my parents so for example my dad I think was also a bit of a melancholy you know and I think I have that as well you know the creative spirit the this the that the and my dad was very sociable like my dad knew a little about everything could have conversations with anyone about anything I think I get that from him as well and you know my mom I know a lot of people know my dad is a, a creative but my mom was actually also a joker she like my mom makes me laugh she she know she she would have all these comments all these things and stuff like that so i think that i actually do have a good blend of both of them and if i think about it like my dad too was like that in the sense that when he's with people he's sociable but he's also fine being at home you know so my dad and i would sit at home for the longest time i would read novels like i think i'm just a good blend of both of them yeah so why did your dad go in yeah. Hit you so badly. Like I remember that I was with a friend. Yeah. And the friend said cancelled an event with me. Oh wow. Because she said I have to go be with Tosi. I worry. Yeah. Deeply. I didn't want to use the language she used, but she was so worried. Yeah. Why did he hit you so badly? She, my whole family, like people would just pop up in my house. Hi Tosi, how are you? Because everybody was checking up on me. So you were just going to sink into a depression. Yeah. Okay, so I think I'm the archetypal daddy's, daddy's pet. Like, you know, people use that expression, but it's not always true. But for me, it was true. Like, I come from a family of daddy, mommy, Funke, and Tosin. That's the unit we grew up with, was four of us. So naturally, we're very close. Like, you know, I, when I meet siblings that are like I, I always tell people that my sister is actually one of my best friends Le legit she's not just a sister to me so that's how it is like we were really close we're very close we and then with my dad I don't know like I, I told my dad everything my dad knew everything about me do you understand like 
I, I would always talk to my dad. I hung out with him all the time. On Saturdays, my dad and I would go on drives. We would walk. Like, I don't know. My dad was a big part of my life. It's like, you know, he's just always been there. And I think that's, that's why when, I think fathers get a bad rep. But I think when you, when you have like a, a good dad, you see like how important a good dad is because he, you know he shaped a lot of things for me and I remember when my dad had his first stroke or at least the the one that I was at home for and he he fell down you know he was on the floor and I don't know if you ever saw my dad but he's he he's not a slim man but rumor has it and I, I remember it happening although I can't do it again but I hear that I lifted him up and I put like I actually put him back on his bed so like I mean for me that was and so that that's like my that's, that's like my I don't know I just I absolutely love my dad and I, I don't know what our connection is we, we just had like a really really deep connection it was just I just loved him and you you always know that nobody lives forever it's a theory that you have and i mean i've lost two grandmoms and things like that so it's not like i've never dealt with death but it, it's my dad like you know he's not supposed to go he's he's supposed to be there forever you know i'm supposed to be able to to get texts from him to see him i used to call him dada <laughs> dada how are you dada and i believe me i was a pest <laughs> Daddy this, daddy that. I mean, there are people who would joke that, ah, look at daddy and his girlfriend, you know. My dad and I were very close. Cool. So I think that that was like, I don't care that I wasn't young when it happened because I had a friend who, and I said, oh, wow, how did you cope when you lost your dad? And he was like, ah, you just lost your dad now. I lost my dad when he was 15. I was like, I don't know that I can tell a difference, you know, because... I don't I, I feel like I was his twin almost you know so I, I not like I feel completely lost I do feel a bit lost without him you know but yeah I mean my dad was I don't know do you notice you move between the east and the west with him yes yeah my dad is my dad was yeah because you know like he's still coming to terms with that. Yeah. I mean, he, 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 he passed on on the 11th of August 2017, which was a few days to my birthday. He passed on last year. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, funny enough, there are times when I still say, hey, daddy, like, did you see that or something? And like, when I joined Inspiration FM this year, you know, the fact that I, I wasn't able to tell him. So, you know, I, I wanted to tell him. Yeah. Like, those are the kind of things, you know, because... My dad used to listen to my show every morning. Really? Every morning. He used to listen to my show every morning. Right. And he would then holler at me and tell me what I said or didn't say. Right. And say, oh, you pronounced, is, uh, it's, uh, you, you pronounced that word wrong, <laughs> you know, <laughs> something like that. Oh, this happened and stuff like that. So, like, I, I do feel, I do really miss him. I, I mean, I'm, I'm very grateful because I have, like, a fantastic sister, a loving mom, like they're all there for me. But I think if you, if you grew up with us and if you knew a bit of our story, you would understand why. <laughs> because even like my family members, they're like that as they're like, hmm, Tosi, it's Tosi we're worried about, so Funke, we know that one will be fine. But Tosi, how is Tosi Kopi? You know, yeah, because I was a daddy's pet. <laughs> so how does that make you see, and I wanted to have a conversation of, people say it's morbid, hmm. but I don't yeah. think about death. Yeah? How, how, how is your relationship with, not relationship, you know what you got yeah, with me? Yeah, like, yeah. How do you see it after? I remember when I lost my father, and this was 10 years ago. What I kept thinking was death is rude. Hmm. Death is rude. Death is rude. What, what, what did, how did that happen? Well, honestly, when I saw my dad lying down lifeless, very weirdly, I was like, I looked around and I said, we really die alone, you know? No matter how much I love him, I'm not here going with him. I'm still alive, he's done his journey. And then I was like, all the people that might have ever given him advice, don't do that, sing it this way, sing it that way, 
do this, wear blue shorts, yellow looks good on you, whatever it is they might ever have told him, there's no one here with him. Yeah. And so funny enough, his death made me feel bolder. Because I was like, when I die, yeah. I'm going to be by myself. And so people who criticize you, people who judge you, people who tell you how they think you should live your life, what you should eat, what you should not eat, leave my cola alone, I like my cola. <laughs> but on a, I mean, on a more serious yeah, note, yeah. it made me realize that truly, like, no, it's not like they didn't love him and it's not like they don't love you. But in the end, who are you living your life for? Because when you die, you're truly going to be by yourself, you know? So the only thing you have is your time on earth to enjoy it and whatever you believe in you know i do believe in life after death with you know with god so at the same time i'm not going to be going around sinning <laughs> but you know what i mean like it, it made me feel like i'm gonna do what i like you know if i like this i'm gonna do it if i i'm not going to keep on saying what will people say what will be because in the end they're not going to be there with you no matter how much they love you you know people People spoke lovingly about him. I, kn I know people love my dad. Like there were people crying at his, you know, at his service of songs. But in the end, you actually do die alone. Hmm. So that hits you. I want to talk about this. Somebody mentioned about, about this, about uh, living your life for yourself. Yeah. I want to come back to that. But first, I do know that you went into a, a depression. Yeah. Past. Yeah. yeah? So, so this was before the bull. That's so, <laughs> so how was that? What what happened? How yeah. how did how, how did this happen? Um, I mean, I don't know that one was before or after. I think you know, like when they say the stages of grief, yeah. and you're just there with all the stages together. One, so you you're just there. Sometimes you're angry. Sometimes you're, you know, you accept, you're like, okay, he's dead, it's good, you know, he was ill anyway. Then you're angry again and then you're bargaining. You're like, okay, well, my daddy was such a joker when he was alive. Perhaps he's just joking now <laughs> and stuff like that. So, I, I mean, if, if, you, if you say I, I went into depression, I think that might be a bit of maybe, I mean, it's not like anyone ever said to me, you're depressed. Do you get what I mean? But... I think I was just very, like, very sad and very, like, you know, just like, yeah, whatever. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's just do it and stuff like that. So I don't think I went through different stages. I think it was I like that. all together. Yeah, yeah. Because it was just there. All these things are guides to help yeah. us understand, but it don't happen exactly. for everyone the same way. Exactly, exactly. And You're alternating between denial yeah. and then grief. And then all of that, yeah. And I think people people go through through it in different ways, you know. And sometimes you have three at the same time. Sometimes, mm -hmm. but I mean, my anger was never with him, you know. So you okay, yeah. there was anger, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't with him. So it was no. Was it death? Um, no. I mean, we've. Maybe the hospital, maybe, but I don't want to go too much into, into that. that. Yeah, because you know, maybe. We did feel there was a bit of negligence, but I don't want to go into right. that too much here. So how did you cope? How did you come out? How did you cope? Um, okay, so there's a Ron Canali song. It's Ron Canali. If, you're, if you catch hold of death, let go of it. If you're going through hell, don't stop. Just go ahead. It's, I don't think it's one of his more known songs, yeah. but I've actually, you know, catch hold of hell, let go of it. If you're going through hell, don't stop. And oh, just go ahead. Oh, just go song, ahead. look for it. So that's it. so that line has stuck with me. If you're going through hell, don't stop. In the sense uh -huh. like don't like go. Like like I told someone, I deal with what I deal. Because also as as a, a human being, everything I feel as Tosin Bokno, that's how I am. When I feel happy, it feels like this is the only happiness there is in the world like you know when i when i'm eating food it's like this meal oh wow this food is so in the same way when i'm sad it's like there's no other sorrow in this world. when i'm done with them like wow that was quite dramatic of you to see but you know when i'm going through it it's like oh, the world is over so the, i think the best way to get over something to deal with something is to go through it still to come my conversation with tosin continues.
I allow myself to feel what I feel, yeah. knowing that there's always light after the tunnel. Because the truth is, I have dealt with things before. You know, I, I, I don't lie to myself, I don't, I don't pretend. I can function, I can function. I, I, I've done my radio show after I had break, I've done my radio show. The day I, I learned my cousin died while I was on air and I still finished the radio show. So I can function, I can still be professional, I can still work, but I will feel the things I feel. And I, I will just, you know, if I want to cry, I'll cry, you know. Um, one or two of my friends and my sister have received such lovely phone calls that involve me just crying. <laughs> you know, and I remember I said to my friend once, I was like, why, you know, like, why do I keep crying so much? And she was like, yeah, but that's just your way of dealing with it. And I was like, it's true, like, if you're going through hell, just because I feel like if you don't let yourself grieve, and I think sometimes we also try to do that to people a lot, where like, don't cry or do you understand what I mean like let them cry you know because sometimes that's how you feel better yeah. you just you have to go through it so yeah so I allow myself feel what I feel knowing that there's always light after the tunnel because the truth is I have dealt with things before and you know and so I always say to myself in five years time you're going to look back on this and feel it differently so feel it now yeah. you've written up in the past about heartbreak Yes. Songs. Oh gosh. Yes. I, see, when Facebook reminds me, I'm like, wow, to sing. Gosh. Yes, I know. Because I've been in, I've been where you've done poems. I've known you for 12 years. Yeah. So, tell me about heartbreak. Hey, heartbreak. Oh gosh. There are, see, see, there are some people they put in this world. You see what they will do to you? They take your heart. They will roll it, yeah. roll it into dough. Then throw it on the floor, they will now start jumping, jumping, jumping on your hearts. That's an image I have never used for, for heartbreak. That's it, so they roll it. Yeah. Yeah. Roll it into dough, like the old toyos used to make bread. <laughs> they will now start jumping on you. I, I, <laughs> I just wrote a, uh, an article yeah. for my daily newsletter, the Daily Vulnerable, and I said, your heart doesn't really break, it bends, mm. it takes a hit, it sucks on. But it won't break. It won't break. Yes, yeah, so yeah. yeah, so I mean, I, I, I've had, you know, my share of heartbreak. At the same time, like I said, when I feel things, it always yeah, feels so like it's the moment. end of the world. So it's like, <gasps> So the poems come it's out of that The end. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the funny thing is, I write poems even when I don't feel that way, or even when it is someone else's story. So for example, if, if someone I know is going through something, then because I think if you can only write about things when you yourself feel it, then what happens when you're happy? <laughs> then you're never going to create again because you're not like so happy, yeah, yeah. so happy, you know. So sometimes you also have to be able to tap into. But I, I, I've had my sh share of heartbreak mainly because, you know, me, I, 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 I saw something once and I thought it applied so well to me. I, I fall in love so easily, I fall in love so fast, I fall in love so terribly hard for love to ever last. You know, I, I, when I saw that poem somewhere, I was like, hmm, I think I know someone that this applies to. So yeah, I mean, I have dealt with heartbreak, real, imagined, whatever it is. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. And did writing about it, is singing about it help you? Yeah, well, I think anytime you bring out pen and paper, you know, and just Put, put the words down it always helps it always helps you know but whatever it is that I feel the second I, I'm able to write about it you know um, I feel better and by the way that's why if you look in my dad's um, the service of songs book you wouldn't see a tribute I wasn't able to write a tribute but as, as at that time I wasn't able to do it then yeah but the, yeah I wasn't able to right so um, I feel like and I, I don't even so I felt like that. Yeah. But then you you said it to my producers. Okay. That you love to you, you I feel like you like to be in control of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the first time I met you, that's a, well, maybe not the first time. We are, we are dramatic like that. Maybe the second <laughs> time. Maybe the second or the half time I met you. Know. Yeah. Um. Why? Do I yes, need to why? be in control? You, so you you said here. 
but I only put out what I want people to know. <laughs> I'm actually here. Yeah, it takes time for me to open up. Mm. So the first one, why do you, why is why is that a deliberate thing? Why is that important to you? I just like to protect myself. The second question. So yes, I want to ask a second question. Follow up to that. Yeah. You like to protect yourself. Yeah. Against what? Beca because today, when I feel things, I feel it extremely. Right. So when I feel betrayed, for example, so let me give you an example. If I were to give you, if I were to take you as a friend and tell you something in confidence, and I find out that you betrayed that confidence, it's not easy for me. Like I don't, I, you know, the, when I feel pain, I feel, and even like, it, it, you know, it, it really hurts. So I think a lot of times I'm just trying to protect myself from, from just that, the way I take it, you know, because I, I hear thick skin, thick skin a lot. I don't know where you can buy that thick skin. If someone, if someone can make it and sell it, I would absolutely love to have it. You know. With an author, she said, "They tell you to develop a thick skin. They don't tell you that not only does it stop things from getting in, it stops, it stops things from going out. Exactly. Yeah, so it's like exactly. you don't want to be that invulnerable person. So yeah. You rather protect yourself. Yeah. Yeah." from the situations that would trigger that. Yeah, because yeah. once you have that wall up, yeah. you know, and, 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 and it's true because then you, that's very true because when you're protecting yourself from things, you're also not going to feel certain things and you're going to miss out on a lot. Yeah. So, but... You, you protect your space yeah, so yeah. that you can feel the full range of your emotions yeah. within a space that's yours. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yes, but at the same time, <laughs> You also have to think of maybe things you might miss out on with that kind of behavior or with that kind of thought, but hey. I feel like you've done that very deliberately in Lagos, in, in, in where, which is where you live, yeah. where you have kind of designed your own life. <laughs> I remember that your car, that, <laughs> You're not Tiny. Too sinker. You know what you're like. You know what? I'm not going to be in this game with you guys. Fits me. You know, I'm going to have fun with it. I'm yeah. going to pack it everywhere. And so I thought it's almost like you began to design your life from very early on. Yeah. Was there something that triggered that, or was it all part of this deliberate nest? And that, if, so, if it's the first, was yeah. that triggered it? If it's the second, how did you learn or know? to be so deliberate about designing kind of your existence mm. in a society like 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 Nigeria as well. I mean and, and that's a big one because I think there's some things that I am naturally. Right. I suspect like there are loads of people who are like that. But the you know someone said happy birthday to say stay quirky. Right. And I was like am I quirky? It's like yeah of course you're quite you're asking <laughs> <laughs> and i was like but that's interesting because you know like sometimes you when you're being yourself you don't like you don't know what it is yeah you're doing what you're yeah doing. but i i think i'm very grateful to my parents you know and to my sister because when i was growing up i don't think i was ever told don't be like i don't know how to explain it like there were no it's not like I was giving free reign to be more spoiled than I. But anyway, it's not like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but I mean, do you understand what I mean? It's, it's like if 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 I wanted to write, I was allowed to write. If I composed a song, they would listen and I would sing it to them. I I would act plays when I was younger and turn my parents into props, I, you know, and they would <laughs> they would let me do it. So I have to be honest, when I'll go back to being the four of us in that unit. When you're growing up like that, and for the most part, I was a day student. So I, I, I only experienced a little bit of boarding school. I think when I was growing up, I became so used to doing things a certain way that it didn't occur to me that it would you know like that oh, yeah, I don't know what you guys were doing with their own yeah because yeah exactly like it didn't occur to me that 
people don't walk on the road and sing if they feel like because yeah. That's what I do, <laughs> you know. So I think it started from when I was younger, like just truly being allowed to create and grow and breathe and be myself. And I think when I did start experiencing um, resistance or, you know, to, to that, which may be from university or something, which is when people start saying, but people don't do that. Why are you wearing blue lipstick? Nobody wears blue lipstick. And you're like, but I like the lipstick. You know, like what I mean? Like, I think that's where the stubbornness that I honestly feel is a family trait, <laughs> you know, kicks in and helps. Because it's just like that stubbornness. Like, what do you mean I can't do that? Like, you know, I like rock music. What do you mean I should write a different? Like, but this is the kind of music that I like. So I want to write it and stuff like that. So I don't know that. I, I do know that it does. It can take a bit to truly be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to tell you how to be. So I think that you also owe it to yourself. You have to sort of be yourself. And when I say be yourself, I'm not saying everybody should be quirky, you know, but like whatever it is that you are, what makes you happy? You know, to, as, as much as it's, you're not breaking laws of the land, laws of God, you know, th things like that. Like, Hello, I don't think God makes a mistake. So if he lets me sing when I feel like, then you know, like, so what, what is wrong with that? It's, it, sometimes I ask myself if my life would be easier if I was like everybody else. And I, I don't know, I don't know that I would ever know if my life would be easier. <laughs> Do you think you've paid a high price for this? And fame, opportunity? Mm. Because, and I'm going to be honest with yeah. you, because called the daily volume like the first time i ever met you you know i took I, I don't know if i told you yeah i was at the lost lord lord dinner in yeah. the city of lagos you were hosting the show with uh, emma, emma. emma yeah and i just thought who are these glorious souls <laughs> they were comfortable in their skin transcendent i thought they were having so much fun it looked like they had figured the world out yeah and so Tosi can sing Tosi can write Tosi can host Tosi can do all those things, Tosi is going to own the world, mm. yeah? And, and this, in terms of how I thought you were going to conquer the society, you've, obviously you have a great career and all of that, but you've not, as far as I know, the things that you are capable of doing, uh. the society hasn't received them from you okay. in its fullness, yeah? Do you think that you're being independent and choosing and insisting on being yourself? has cost you greatly in a society that prizes conformity? I don't know. And you know, we may never know because at the same time, I, I mean, I wish I could see the vision you had. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe the vision you have and yeah. the vision I have, I you know, are different, yes. you know. But at the same time, I also feel like I've always been a late bloomer, weird or not, you know, in the sense that I don't think um, I've ever done anything at the right time in the sense of you know so i i i don't yeah i mean sometimes you might say oh i you know why don't i have any of my novels published and things like that but at the same time what i also learn is you you look inwards first and you you blame you don't blame others if you're even going to blame anybody then let it be like number three or number four on the on the poll do you get what i mean so for me, I would just always look inwards and be like, okay, well, maybe I don't finish things I start. That's one, you know. So before you blame people is what I'm trying to say. Like I'd say, oh, you know, I'm not getting this. I'm not getting that. I, I don't tend to look at it that way. I don't know how to explain it. Do you get So, big, so I like that. So it's first be yourself. It's to take responsibility for yeah, yourself. Yeah. That's, what, that's essential. Yeah. I feel like if you're not happy, um, is it Maya Angelou that says, if you're not happy with where you are, move, you're not a tree. <laughs> <laughs> you know so that's what I always yeah. feel like if you're if you're not where you think you should be or yeah. if you're not happy with you know something yeah. you your options are there and I don't think blaming people or blaming circumstances oh I wish I was taller you know have I lost out on auditions because I was short yes <laughs> still to come my conversation with Tosin continues 
I think I was just, I really wanted to be different because right. I do think toasting is one of the most popular Yoruba names. Right. Yeah, so toasting, toasting, toasting. I think I, think I just said spelling mine with a Y. Have I lost out of opportunities? Maybe yeah. because um, I, I remember there was a time I was asked if I would wear a wig. It was just like an offhand thing. Yeah. And I was like, oh no, you know, I like my hair. And mm. Apparently that was one of the yeah. deciding factors. So it's possible, but at the same time, I don't like to, I don't like to look at things like, oh, you're not doing all, the, I don't know how to explain it. You yeah, know, I, I just, I, get that. I'm, I, get I just, that. yeah. You're doing what you're doing. Yeah. And, and you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Tracy Ellis Ross, Yeah. you know, oh. for me, mm -hmm. that chick was on Girlfriends. Yeah. yeah. You know, for yeah. she's always had her beautiful essence. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I wonder sometimes like if she had conformed, mm -hmm. she might have got all these things. But would she, do you understand? Like now, I think if you go to Tracy Ellis yeah, Ross now, yeah. you know who you're going yes, to. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's almost like Donald Glover as well. You're like, yeah. If I want to come out to the world, that's the way I want to come out to the world yeah. on my own terms. Yeah. yeah. I feel like Jacob, they, they're all these yeah. guys who you're you like, know? You're, at my time, at, yeah. Yes, yeah. I get that. I feel yeah. like, yeah. Like, you know, you, you. And yeah. the, I think what is important, like I always tell people, I'm like, can you sleep at night yes at the end of the day yeah. you know because people will always think maybe this is how things should be and yeah. stuff like that yeah. but what i always ask is what do you say yeah. like what what exactly are your thoughts so yeah, yeah it, i mean I, I i don't dwell on it too much but i just yeah. feel like if you lose your essence mm. i think that might be one of the worst things to that's lose. the thing you would worry about not yeah. all these other things i'm asking yeah. you you would worry yeah. about losing the essence yeah. of who you are yeah, yeah? What's with the why in the toasting? <laughs> Me and you have had legends. <laughs> fights. We're not legendary, but then you're like, today, I'm not coming for that event because you use an eye. <laughs> and I've told I don't you twice. Think I would say I'm not coming for the event. <laughs> yeah, I would say I don't like that. the way it, my name was written. Yeah. Yeah, you have to what write the, it properly. Yeah. Because the, the typical toasting in, in, in the Yoruba is I. I yeah. But you've been about the why from the start. What's that? I honestly don't remember. I honestly don't remember. I think I was just, I really wanted to be different because right. I do think toasting is one of the most popular Yoruba names. Right. Yeah. yeah. So toasting, toasting, toasting. I think I, think I just said spelling mine with a Y. Right. But I think there's also a trick of the brain where when I, when I, when I see something a certain way, and I'm using, then that's how it is. I don't yeah. know how to explain it. Yeah. T-O-S-I-N just doesn't feel yeah. like my name. I yeah. don't know how to explain it. Yeah. And that's just it. Like, right. if you write it with an I, it just doesn't feel like my name. Yeah, I don't know. It, it just feels like it's someone else. Yeah. And I think it's like my, you know, that it's almost like it's now being tied to my identity. Yeah. You know? So I'm just like. Has the fight been worth it? The fight I, about the why? I mean, yeah, a lot of people write my name with Y now. <laughs> <laughs> so you think it worked, yeah? No, I yeah. mean, I, I don't know. Like, I just, it's, it's my, yeah, I don't yeah, know how to say it. It's yeah. like if someone says, my name is Shade, but yeah. I spell it with I-E, and yeah. you, you know, it's still E-E-E-E. Yeah, -E 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 -E. yeah, I mean, there's certain things that you would, you would accept. But at the same time, I also think, if, if it's like a, a little thing, at the same time, why can't it, mm -hmm. why can't you just spell it with a Y? Yeah. <laughs> then you got married. Yes. I didn't think that was going to happen. Let me explain what I mean by that. Let me explain what I mean by that. Okay. So what I mean is, so, so you, 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 were, you insist on your space, you design that, and we live in a society where, when it comes to marriage, so, so I mean, saying I didn't expect that, it was just me trying yeah. to echo, um, what people say, what people, with the word people most use with marriage, especially the choosing a partner is compromise. Oh. It's not as if it's automatic. <laughs> it's like they think of it, they think of a negotiation process <laughs> where you get less of yourself to accommodate more of a person. And if you're a woman, the burden of that is expected to rest on the woman. Like she's the negotiator. She's the one to accept. She's the one to do all of those things. And I've never seen Tosin as a negotiator, as a giving a bit of herself, any part of herself. Like this is me and you have to accept me like that. But you, was there ever a time people said to you, like, no, you're too independent, you're too quirky, you know, this is not going to work in a marriage, or this is not going to etc etc, and you thought, that's something I'll have to deal with, or that's nonsense I will have to reject, yeah. you know, and did any negotiation and all this compromise that they talk about 
happen at the point at which you said, I'm going to choose to spend the rest of my life with this person? You know, I, honestly, I don't think about these things. Yeah. I think on the outside looking in, yeah. those are things you might see. Yeah. But I, I honestly live my life like on a daily basis yeah. and just, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. I don't, I don't have deep reflections of, oh, this, you know, maybe because also you have to understand I don't see these things that you see yeah. because I'm just being myself. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So, so I has marriage changed you? I don't. In I, any way? I, 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 I think I saw someone once, mm. I think last year, and the person was like, oh, I'm so happy marriage hasn't changed you. I thought you would have changed. I was like, how does marriage change people? So mm. I think you guys will be the ones. I, don't I think know, people married. can tell me. No, what I mean is, I think it's people that can say, oh, okay, yeah. this is how you were before, mm. after. I, don't, I personally don't know. So you've been, you st you're st so you think that you're still yourself? I'm, I'm myself and I think also if you're going to fall in love with someone, I think you better fall in love with someone mm. that allows you be yourself mm -hmm. or mm. else. But you know that's not the same way for a lot of people. Really? No. Okay. You do, do you know that? That's what I'm asking. Do you know that, that there are people who are less of themselves when they get into partnerships like marriages and ETC? Do you know that? I, I guess you, there might be if mm. you... I think it also depends on why you get into it. And what, I mean, obviously, I didn't marry when I was 22, mm. which I'm sure by 25, there were family members that I didn't know that were in white garment churches saying my name. Mm. Father, no. mm. Baba. You know, so I feel like, obviously... <laughs> I had to pretend I already wanted to laugh about that one, but now I'm laughing. Okay, so go ahead. No, because what I'm saying is, <laughs> yeah, like, the truth is, you... It, it, I think it depends on what, why you're going to it and what you're going to yeah. things for. Yeah. And, you know, like, I just yeah. leave my... You know yeah. who, who I, I see myself a lot as? No, tell me. Pink. Do you know Pink? Then, of course I know Pink. Yeah, yeah. I feel like... Yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah. I get that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that you're lucky? I'm not lucky, I'm blessed. Yeah, so do you think that you're blessed? I think blessed I'm blessed. like lucky. I think like I I I think God has blessed me with favor. Yeah. I, you know, I'm so grateful to him yeah. because I look no matter what you are, no matter what you do, you, you cannot, in this life, there are certain principles. For example, you have to be hardworking. Yeah. You know, you have to, but you know, there's also that element of favor, yeah. whatever it is people want yeah. to call it, there's yeah. something that, because I have to be honest, sometimes I'm like, you know, I've gone through life getting things that I have and being where I am without having compromised certain things. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Mm. You know? I haven't dealt yeah. with yeah. certain levels of harassment, for yeah. example, if you yeah. know what I mean, whether yeah. at school level or yeah. to get a job and right. things like that. So, yeah. you know, for me, I'm like, that's why I say everything that I am, I'm happy with it in the sense that you don't know what you would have gained, but you also don't know what you would have lost, right. you know. Is there anything that you thought about the world when you were 14 or 15 that life surprised you by? Mm. that when you finally entered into the world. Also because I'm assuming, based on our conversation, when you were younger, you spent a lot of time reading, writing, yeah. with yourself, you know, so when you entered into the world, yeah? Did you, when I say enter, it doesn't, yeah, there's yeah, no yeah, particular I, I entry. Mean, yeah. Was mean. there anything that shocked you about reality? Yeah, you know. What? People. <laughs> <laughs> Explain that. Yeah, because, you know, like, you see, TV doesn't talk back. TV doesn't have an opinion. Yeah. When I tell it, I want to watch Judge Judy. It goes yeah. to Judge Judy and yeah. I watch Judge Judy. Yeah. You know, but um, you know, with people, you meet different people mm -hmm. in, in, in life mm -hmm. and you yourself as a human being, you have like your little quirks. You know, yeah. like everybody is. So I think it's, it's the people. I don't know how to explain it. There's, a, there's an expression, hell is other people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like it's just the fact that, so if, okay, let me give you an example. I have seen a situation or been in a situation where this thing could change things, it mm. could be great, but there are one or two people that are going to ruin it just because 
they can or mm. just like just to make themselves happy. I don't know how to explain yeah, what I, I mean. Do you human get? beings, yeah. Yeah, so human you know, beings will be human beings. Yeah, so the, yeah. the idea that people will sabotage things, yeah, yeah. Um, you have to learn to, to you have to learn and come to terms with the people who are either going to love you no yeah. matter what you do yeah. and then there are those who are going to dislike you no yeah. matter what you do yeah. there are people who and you know you you might say oh my goodness let's all do this let's do this this is great and then there are people who are like why why you know so i think it's actually yeah yeah i get that, I get that. Again. one of the things that shocked me when i came into the world was that people didn't like me and so, I remember one of my former bosses would say, I should think to herself, for me, she would say, Can't they see I'm a good person? <laughs> She's like, No, they can't. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so I, can, I totally understand yeah, how human yeah, beings can surprise yeah. you. What's the greatest lesson life has taught you? Um, hmm. Just do it. I mean, just. If you're going through yeah. hell, don't yeah. stop. <laughs> As you know, just yeah. just leave. Yeah. You know, leave. And an average on a on a, on a, a scale of one to ten. Yeah. Somebody asks you, Tosin, are you happy? Oh, I think I'm at um, most times. Mm -hmm. If you had asked me before August 11, 2017, yeah. I probably would have been at like a nine. Mm -hmm. Here, I'm like a, a seven, eight, because you know, the, in the end, I'm I'm happy and like. I just, I like being happy. Do you get what I mean? Because like I said, n whatever it is people think you should be or shouldn't be, mm -hmm. they're not going to be there. Yes. They're not living this life yes. with you, yes. you know. So yeah. that's, that's, that's what I mean. Like, so in the end, you find it in yourself. And I remember like, because I, I, sh I just started at Inspiration FM yeah. and the, one of the gentlemen at the reception that I see every day, mm. he's like, you come in here, you're always dancing, you're always singing, like you just, I was like, you know what, <laughs> life goes on, yeah. you know, I, oh, by the way, I also take a lot of life's lessons from Tupac, right. <laughs> Tupac right. actually, you know, and that's why the thing that life goes, hey, life goes on. Mm. If you think, if you think like, because your world has ended in your, in your mind, mm. you think everybody else is going to stop. No, people are going to, like, life will continue to move. Life mm. goes on. Mm. Whatever it is you're dealing with, whatever it is you're feeling, life, life will continue to go on. on. Thank you, Tosin. Thank you. This was precisely the conversation mm. I thought we'd have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.